Welcome to The Non-Writer. I'm Rick Reese, and today I'm talking with two guitarists who use improvisation heavily in their work. First, uh, we have Jake Furman from The Hominoids. Hi, Jake. Hello, Rick. And next is uh, Mike Baguetta, who is just getting ready to tour with the band MSSV, which includes uh, Mike Watt and Stephen Hodges. In fact, Mike, uh, you're, you're taking off tomorrow on this tour, is that right? Yeah, first gig's tomorrow in Pedro, September 5. Good, and it's a long tour, uh, it looks like. Shows. Wow, yeah, that should be great. Well, when I saw that uh, you guys were coming to my local music venue, Winter's Tavern, and that the Hominoids are going to be opening up for MSSV, I thought I got to try and get these guys together because I wanted to get your in-depth perspective on this path to improvisation that you've both taken. Um, maybe we could start with you, Mike. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you got into improvised music and playing it? Um, I mean, I just kind of heard, heard it when I was starting to get into music, you know, one of my first albums that I got into was uh, Jeff Beck Wired. And one of my favorite tracks on that album is the uh, Mingus tune. He plays Goodbye Pork Pie Hat. And uh, for me, I was kind of like intrigued that he was playing a song that he didn't write, which seemed for whatever reason, like bizarre to me, like, oh, you can play other people's music. And so I found out who this Charles Mingus guy was. And then it led me to um, like a, a late Coltrane album and then that led me to like Miles Davis in a silent way so I kind of started off with like these sort of more free improv ty types of um, music that I got into when I was kind of picking out my own stuff and so at that time were you also playing guitar yeah I was playing guitar at that point yep yeah. yeah maybe thir okay. 13 14 my dad plays guitar so I, I picked it up from him so at what point did you start playing or incorporating improvised music into your playing? Well, I think I always I always did. I mean, I just you can kind of pick up an instrument and just sort of mess around and make music, you know. There's no there's no rule against it. Nobody told me not to do it, so I I did it. <laughs> right. It makes a little so improvisation would just kind of happen with you naturally right from the start, it sounds like. Well, I think it happens with from with everybody from the start. You know, uh, I mean, uh, I don't know if it's different for Jake, but um, if you pick up an instrument, you don't know what you're doing. You know, in quotes, you kind of just do something and there you go. And there you're, you're improvising. Like the idea of improvised music to me isn't like something that someone has to like work their way up to. It's it's the most pure thing you can do. You just pick up something and you make noise. It's like learning to talk. You don't know any words. You're just sort of figuring out sounds and stuff like that. So it, it's... Um, it's not like it doesn't belong to everybody. It does. So to me, it's just kind of like a real instinctual kind of like, um, it, should, it kind of probably is the first thing everybody does. Yeah. All right. Well, how about you, Jake? Uh, how, do you remember how you got turned on to improvisation? Yeah, I mean, I would basically just add that I uh, agree with everything Mike said. Uh, there's just kind of, I think when you first start playing, there's a certain point where you kind of, you know, you learn a few chords and then you realize you can just, you know, you could be sitting there with a buddy playing and you just realize, oh, yeah, you can just kind of stop thinking about this and let your fingers do whatever and uh, kind of dance around with it. And uh, I don't know. I think that's just what, uh, yeah, for me, too, it came early, just the, not that I was good at it, but just that I realized I could I didn't have to just, uh, you know, learn songs or, or uh, learn to practice scales. I could just kind of mess around and, and use my ears and and then go from there so yeah yeah so was there a was there a point though um because yeah improvising when you're just picking stuff up um at home or with your buddies or whatever is one thing but making it um an integral part of your live performance in front of an audience is kind of a different step do you remember mm -hmm taking that step or was it a conscious decision uh, mike maybe start with you um i mean i don't really agree with that premise you know like i think i mean i i know what you're saying and i think that that is the way a lot of people think about it but um 
I don't think like improvised music is a is a, a genre that has a sound. You know, I think it it can be whatever somebody wants it to be. And if they want to incorporate it into their music in a way or their performance, then that's really great. I don't think it has to be like, okay, now I've got to try to play like Coltrane and I've got to wait till I'm ready to do it in front of an audience and stuff like that. I just think like, um, you know, I don't think it has to be thought of that way. But I know for me personally, like since that's what you're actually asking, um, I think like uh, what fascinates me is that sort of line between composed music and improvised music um the things where like the listener doesn't know if it's composed or it's improvised uh i like those kind of moments where things maybe link up through improvisation or they link up through composition that allows the improvisation to sort of shine through in a way those things really fascinate me like the idea of like um you know if you have a really like lucid dream and it's maybe like a mid-afternoon nap and you don't really know later if you were awake or if you were asleep when you had these ideas you know i I kind of like that sort of space in in life, you know, so I, I try to kind of use it in that way uh, in my own music, um, for sure. So now, I don't know if that actually answered any of your questions, <laughs> but there you go. Yeah. Yeah. How about how about you, Jake? Um, did you did you uh, realize at some point? Um, I'm I'm going to be doing this on stage in front of an audience. And did that, did that make any difference to you? Uh, I think it was kind of natural just uh, I, when I started getting into music uh, more heavily, I was just kind of getting into uh, some stuff that incorporated improvisation. So uh, it just kind of came naturally, you know, like uh, never anything fully improvised, but, you know, there's always sections that allow uh, some leeway to, to mess around and, and have fun. But yeah. So it be, so it becomes a part of your songwriting process. Um, it sounds like for Mike, it always has been. Is that right? Uh, it's always been the goal. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, I don't, um, I'm not guilty of batting a thousand every time, but um, the ideal is kind of creating a music where there are pieces that are formed and there are pieces that have to be added as you make it up and each one of those helps the other complete the piece into something that it couldn't be at, in any other moment. So here's a question that uh, I got asked once when I was interviewing another uh, improvising musician. And I love this question. Um, what does improvisation mean to you? Because when I was talking to this musician about it, I was asking him about his approach and then he had to turn the question back to me because uh he needed to know where i was coming from in terms of what improvis what, what improvised music means to me so is is this uh is, is this a question that even makes sense to you mike the uh the question is what what is what it the, yeah what 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 <laughs> What do you think is improvisation? What do I think is improvisation? I think improvisation yeah. is just like music that is uh, being played that hasn't been um, written or composed. That hasn't been composed. Right. Right. So the, not everybody sees it that way, apparently. How about you, Jake? What is improvisation to you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, it's like a, I wouldn't, I don't want to say it's a pure form of music, but it's kind of a, more direct link uh straight to the soul i don't know sometimes if you're hearing listening to some live recording or something and you just you can if like the band kicks into something and you can just feel that there's some spur of the moment thing that's that just hits them all i mean you can you can feel that and i feel like uh that can't really be replicated in uh hard compositions in that way with the, the raw attack of the feeling i guess is what i'm getting at yeah and uh i guess also for me it's uh improvised music is uh, kind of the difference between whether I want to just listen to music or if I actually want to play music. And I think uh, if I didn't incorporate improvisation, I probably wouldn't have, uh, you know, music wouldn't have uh, been as big of a thing for me in my life, for sure. I don't know if I'd uh, still be playing or what I, you know, who knows, but it's uh, certainly the 
a, a very core thing for me. Sure. And so at some point you uh, you put this band together and improvisation is is uh, um, on your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me about the formation of uh, uh, of this band for for you, Jake, uh, the hominoids? Um, how did you find like minded players and and um, and uh, were you looking for other improvisers to play with? Uh, well, it's kind of interesting. Uh, just the, the two of the guys in my band, Jordan and John, the bassist, bassist and drummer, we've known each other since we were five years old. We all went to Catholic school together. Uh, so we just kind of like, uh, you know, the, our musical journey is all very entwined. So it wasn't like I had to go out and look for uh, people to to improvise with and, and, and do that. Like it was my friends and we were all getting into the same stuff. So it just kind of worked out and went from there. So, yeah. So, Mike, uh, MSSV, um, how, how did that get together? Well, we, we've all known each other since we were four years old, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, man, uh, Jake, actually, that's that's really like an interesting point, because I always thought like every record I'd heard that was like a great record. I don't I don't know why, but I just assumed that like the all, all bands had known each other since like childhood. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise like how could you make a great record how could you make great music with somebody who didn't know them like i thought this well into my 30s mind you you know until i kind of realized like oh people just sometimes they don't do that you know like because there are a lot of records that i don't think are great where you can tell it's like people just called up the you know the hot sure. players yeah. or whatever you know and it kind of falls flat but I thought the records that really were happening, I was like, these guys must have known each other since high school or whatever. So that's that's interesting. But this band that I have, MSSV, obviously, you know, we haven't. There's like age differences and location differences and all kinds of differences and stuff. But that came about really as kind of my experiment when I learned um, that kind of someone else I looked up to that that I look up to, present tense, um, had made an, one of the albums that I consider is a great album by kind of cold calling the people. And I didn't really know that till he told me, you know, really a handful of years ago. And so I had an opportunity to try that um, when my friend Chris Schlarb asked if I would make a record for Big Ego, his label. And um, I said, yeah, I want to try this idea where I, I ask people to play I've never met and who have never met each other. And that was the Wall of Flowers album with um, Jim Keltner and Mike Watt. And then uh, when we went to we were going to tour that record. Jim doesn't really travel anymore. And so uh, not too much anyways. And so I asked Stephen Hodges if he would play with us. And he did that, that first tour in 2019. And halfway through, we, I was kind of realizing like, oh, yeah, you change one person. Of course, it changes the dynamic of all the music. So I should write brand new music for this band. And that's how MSSV came about. And... Um... And now you're doing this big tour, and and you and I think you're doing another record too. Or you just released another record? Is that right, Mike? Yeah, we did a tour last year, uh, the Haru tour in 2022. That was 48 shows in 48 days, and I wrote a set of new music for that um, when our first record came out, Mainstream Stop Valve. Um, and we did that tour, and then we played the new music half and half between the sets every night. And then as soon as that tour was over, on May Day we recorded the new music, which is the album Human Reaction, which is which is out now. And on this tour, we're playing the Human Reaction album plus some other stuff. And then we're also playing brand new sets of music that we're going to record right at the end of this tour, which will be our, our third studio album that'll come out um, at some point. So you've both played uh, at my local venue, uh, Winter's Tavern. Um, we're a little off the beaten path here in Pacifica. We are close to San Francisco, but I'm curious how you guys came to know winter's tavern um uh, mike um do you remember uh the first time you played winter's tavern yeah it was actually uh one of the first mini tours mssv did when we were putting the music together to make the first mainstream stop valve record um watt put me in touch with cj uh and uh i got in touch with him and he seemed cool and uh it was that easy I see. So, so uh, Mike Watt already knew about Winter's Tavern. Yeah. 
Yeah, cool. And and Jake, I know you've I've seen you a couple of times at uh, Winter's Tavern. How did you find out about it? Oh, weird. Because you live you're on the you live on the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge. It's not like it's a local place for you. Yeah, we were just kind of emailing local places, you know, in the general area, and uh, just when we were getting started and didn't have much music to our name or anything, and CJ was uh, just really, uh, you know, he he stepped up and was like, "Oh yeah, you guys can play this." This date and this date and was real supportive right off the bat. So shout out to CJ. Um, and that's kind of how we got started at Winners. And it's a, it's our favorite place to play in the Bay Area for sure. Yeah, I know. Well, the Hobanoids kind of have made Winters Tavern uh, their home <laughs> venue, even though it's not that close. Um, um, we'd love that. <laughs> but, uh, but Mike, um, can you tell me a little bit about how you, I mean, you're doing 50 venues real soon all yeah. how many 58 58 so um how does winter's tavern compare to the other venues that you're going to be playing on this tour well some of them i haven't played before this tour so i, I can't answer that for all of them but um you know every place is different uh for sure and that's kind of a fun thing to do but um one thing that i always notice is that uh you know the um the people that run a venue that we play at, uh, it's always reflective of the people that run it, you know? So some places are really warm and welcoming. Some places are a little more business-like and stuff. And uh, obviously Winners has like a real kind of sort of local, long storied history, you know, cozy feeling. And I think that has a lot to do with uh, CJ who's running it. So that's a cool thing. Yeah, sure is. So uh I look forward to uh, seeing both of you guys uh, at Winter's Tavern on September 13th. It's going to be uh, the Hominoids will be opening up for uh, MSSV. Um, and uh, there's another uh, band on the bill, Control C, I believe they're called. Um, tell me about how much you're looking forward to coming to Winter's Tavern. Go ahead, Jake. <laughs> I'm, always, I'm always looking forward to, get, to going to Winter's Tavern. So. You know, I mean, I know we're playing there this Friday too, so it'll be kind of a, a back-to-back thing. But that's uh, right. Well, yeah, the Hominoids are doing one of the one of the matinees. Matinee yeah, uh, when Winters does the matinee thing on the Fridays and the weekend outdoors because they have a beer garden now. Have you seen the beer garden, Mike? Um, I'm not sure. Last time we played there was a, a another tour, and it's a little bit hectic. But you know, we get in and, and uh, get out and try to give a good show for everybody. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing this show. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I want to thank you guys for taking some time out here, especially uh, you, Mike, because uh, I know that you've got a lot of prep to do for this brutal looking tour. So good luck with that. It won't be brutal. No. Oh, good. Good. But uh, de I'm definitely looking forward to hearing Jake play with the hominoids, too, for sure. And, and uh, looking forward thank to you for you guys. sharing the stage yeah. with us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be great. All right, guys. Thank you. Good to meet Thanks, you, Rick. Rick. All right. Yeah, you too. See y'all. Right. See ya.